Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on today's webinar. This afternoon, you'll learn about power quality and energy efficiency. We're joined by our presenters. Uh, we have Rob Barker, Director of Power Quality Experts, an ECA commercial associate, and we're also joined by Luke Osborne of the ECA technical team. Uh, together, they'll be discussing how to assess and manage power quality and help boost energy efficiency for clients. They'll also answer any questions you may have today in a Q&A session at the end of today's webinar. I will shortly hand over to Luke to kick off the uh, presentation and the introductions. But before I do that, uh, I'd just like to remind you that you can use the questions box on your screen at any time during today's presentation. I will see these questions and field them to our panel at the end of the webinar. And lastly, from me, a full replay of today's webinar will be available on ECA's YouTube channel. That's at youtube.com forward slash ECA live. Uh, be sure to also check out our other webinar replays there as well. We've got a wide range of uh, videos uh, covering various technical and business related topics. And with that said, I hope you enjoy today's session and over to you, Luke. Thank you, Omar. Um, yeah, hi, thanks uh, to everyone for joining us for our second commercial associate webinar. Um, as you've just been told, Rob Barker is going to be talking us through some of the um, deciphering the black art of uh, power quality and harmonics. Uh, this is a subject that's often misunderstood or even uh, something that people are completely oblivious to. Uh, but Rob will be outlining power quality in a fully understandable manner, uh, covering what people should be concerned with um, or why people should be concerned with power quality, uh, the benefits in addressing this, uh, the, the benefits both for cost and also for reducing power use, uh, which is obviously very important in aiding our path to net zero carbon 2050. Um, I think you'll realise that there's many opportunities for the installer um, in understanding um, and delivering power quality analysis uh, and that can also add another string to your bow. So without th further ado, over to you Rob. Okay, thanks Luke. Um, so yeah, my name is uh, Rob Barker, I'm the Director of Power Quality Experts and we're going to be going through a bit about power quality and energy efficiency today. So if we can go on to the first slide please. So we intend to go through Bit of an introduction about who we are, uh, who Sonal is, that's who we deal with in terms of instrumentation, what power quality is. Um, we're going to have a look at the power quality measurements uh, in relating to the standard 5160, what harmonics are, um, look at some energy efficiency measurements, um, follow that up with the uh, power quality health check or typical survey measurements that we that can be made, and we'll briefly touch on instrumentation. So if we can go to the, uh, the first slide, please. So a little bit about Power Quality Expert. Um, the company was established in uh, 2016. Um, the original concept of the company was to be just to do energy low profiling um, surveys, harmonic studies, power quality investigations. Uh, we then got involved with um, training people who were interested in learning about the uh, about power quality. So we would do training. Uh, we do training courses. We hold. Um, free power quality seminars with local training colleges and we also provide product training on behalf of Sonal in the UK. That led on to us developing a service called Power Quality Health Check um, that was developed towards the end of 2017 and we launched it in 2018. Um, this allows you as the contractor to either hire a power quality analyzer or logger, do the survey yourself, send us the data through an online portal, we'll analyze the information and produce a standardized report for you. Following on from that, we're now developing Power Quality Clinic. So the concept behind that is a little bit more involved that you can consult with us live uh, before you do the survey. We can talk about the measurements you're gonna be needing to do, why you're gonna be doing them. We can have again, have a look at the results, do a Power Quality Health Check report for you as well. And then again, follow that up with an after a consultation about solutions and possibly refer you on to people that can provide you with PFC or VO or harmonic filtering. For those of you who look at instrumentation, there's the uh, relationship that we have with Sonal. So they've got their own website, sonal.pl, or you can look at ours, which is sonal.uk. And we also have a dedicated site for their power quality analyzers. Um, on there as well as a power quality knowledge base. So common 
questions on power quality is there for you to refer to. And there's also a free guide to power quality that you can download on there. Next slide. So to make that a little bit more clear and simple for people, we've now got a um, complete power quality suite of solutions all under one website. So powerqualitysuite.com um, has all of our sites under the one umbrella site. So to refer to, make it a lot easier for you. Next slide, this next slide, please. So a little bit about Sonal. They're established back in 1994. So they've recently celebrated their 25th anniversary. Uh, they're based over in Poland in a small town called Swidnicka, um, in some nice modern factory in one of their um, economic zones. It was established by a couple of engineers um, who are still active today with the company, especially with R&D of new products. Um, they manufacture a complete range of instrumentation from multifunction meters, thermal images, low resistance ductometers, meters, obviously power quality analyzers, clamps, multimeters, and we have a nice range of high voltage equipment. So UV corona camera for detecting HV discharge, high current loop impedance meters, high voltage uh, loop impedance meters, which we predominantly supply to the railway as they work up to 750 volt network and HV installation testers. So next slide, please. So what is power quality? So for us, power quality tends to be a sort of an all encompassing capsule term, which what we've done here is we've tried to break it down into its constituent parts. So we have a standard, which is 5160. We've got harmonics and then we've got energy efficiency. And these three topics tend to always get to refer to under that one power quality term. So next slide, please. So how they actually relate. So the standard relates to the DNO or the network operator and it defines what they're responsible for. Um, harmonics are what are produced by the customer uh, or the customer's equipment and then energy efficiency is obviously how that is all used um, by the consumer. Next slide. And then we can take that down another level and we can see that the DNO is responsible for voltage, the harmonics will relate to the current and then the watts relates to those two together, volts and current. Okay, next slide. So 5160, so 5160 defines what the DNO is responsible for supplying. Um, so we can see it defines the main characteristics of the voltage um, or the low voltage and medium voltage electrical distribution system. And the standard gives limits and values within which these voltage characteristics must be maintained by them. Next slide, please. So the DNO has responsibilities or their energy supply has the responsibilities. So they need to provide energy and electricity to the recipient. They may need to maintain the continuity of that supply and they need to keep within the operating parameters that's defined within that standard or, or what we would actually call power quality. But it's also important not to forget that the power user also has responsibilities and duties as well. So they need to keep within their active and reactive power, which is defined within their contract. And they also have to limit the harmonic emissions from nonlinear loads from their plant onto the electrical supply system. And we'll look at that um, in a few slides time, how that relates back to this. Next slide, please. So within 5160, we've got various parameters which they've got to they've got to adhere to. So frequency, it's got to be 50 hertz plus or minus. We've got flicker, which is a high voltage fluctuation, voltage variation. So yeah, it's going to be 230 volts plus or minus 10%. Um, harmonics in the voltage, interruptions, and this sort of this little graph here sort of gives an illustration of what we would mean by a swell dip, uh, nominal voltage, just as an indication. Okay, next slide. So just as a as a side point out of interest, the 5160 standard was inspired by the um, Computer and Business Equipment Manufacturers Association. They published a standard in which they for how they or where their equipment should work within. So we can see there's obviously a nominal voltage, and around that we have a border in which the, the equipment is expected to work. Anything around that swells transients 
is what we now refer to back in the 51 in the, in the standard. So, next slide. So for 5160, it defines what must be delivered to the end user and it defines those, those uh, the mains voltage. So for the standard, it's either a yes or a no or a pass or a fail. So when we do a voltage assessment, after the week's monitoring, it will come back and say, yes, the supply is fine, or no, it's not. Um, this is particularly useful because we occasionally find that customers are quick to blame the main supply or the wiring and they, they want to point the finger away from themselves. And by doing this sort of assessment, we can say, well, actually, no, the supply is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It complies. It's what you're actually doing with that supply within your installation that's causing the problem. So although it doesn't actually solve the power quality problem, it removes a fault from the electricity supplier or potentially as you as the contractor, because you're the one that they look to and say, well, it must have been something that you've done, but you've proved that you've done your, you've tested the wires, they're fine, and the voltage supply is fine. Um, and it's important to remember that this is, it's a, it's a voltage standard, it's not, not to do with current. So, next slide, please. So we move on to harmonics. So when we talk about harmonics, we're talking about a mathematical frequencies used to describe the distortion of a waveform. So in this case, it's the distortion of the current waveform and subsequently the possible distortion of voltage waveform. Um, all harmonics are related to the fundamental frequency. So in the UK, our fundamental frequency is 50 Hertz. The US, it would be 60 Hertz. And if you ever get involved with um, aerospace, there's this 400 hertz, but today we're going to be looking at, um, at 50. The next slide, please. So as we can see, nice little graph, that each harmonic is a multiple of the fundamental. So the third harmonic, which is the one that everybody commonly refers to is three times 50, which is 150 Hertz. And we can then group the harmonics into different sequences. So for example, we have a negative sequence harmonics. So if we give the example of a motor, so these harmonics go in reverse of the phase and potentially could turn the motor, have a braking effect on the motor or a negative torque. This in itself will then cause the motor to draw additional fundamental or 50 hertz current in order to try and get to the speed that it's supposed to be at. And this can then, if you're drawing too much current, can have use and stripping effects. Um, and also the long term, it's going to damage the motor because it's having to work harder than it needs to. We then have zero sequence harmonics. So called this because they all have the same zero point reference on their phase. So because of that, they don't actually cancel each other out. And as a result, they all add up and then return back down the neutral. Um, that again can cause problems with uh, degradation of um, insulation or warm, more heating effect in the conductor. So if we go on to the next slide. So the harmonics, so they're caused by basically how equipment uses current these days. So a phone charger, a light bulb, or a computer will only take the current when it actually needs to take that current, which is more energy efficient because it's using what it needs as opposed to continually taking power. But by doing that, it then has the effect of creating these frequencies within the current, current waveform. So if we go to the next slide, so we can see that a nonlinear load draws current in a nonlinear fashion. And this distorted current will interact with the impedance of the source, distorting the, the voltage waveform. And if it's severe enough, this has the potential to spread network harmonics back into the network. So this is where we fall back onto the 5160. So the DNO is responsible for providing your supply, your voltage supply within those limits. And if you're creating distortion within their network through how your load is creating current harmonics, it's potentially going to affect them. And if it affects them, it's going to affect other people on the network. And if they complain, then they need to do something about it. 
and worst case scenario they could identify you as the source and disconnect you and disconnect you they probably wouldn't do that they'd probably send you a strongly worded letter um, and suggest that you investigated the problem and, and resolved it before they did that but that's where it all sort of ties in together so if we go to the next slide so the immediate effects of harmonics can be deterioration of power factor which we'll see in a couple of slides time how that plays in decrease in motor power so we discussed how a negative harmonic will have a, a negative torque or a braking effect on the motor untimely tripping so again if the motor is drawing more power on the on the fundamental there's the potential for it to cause that um, that tripping and then oversized um, components so if you've got current flowing back down the neutral that shouldn't be there you're going to have to have a larger larger conductor to cope with that then medium to long-term effects so again it's decreased motor life if the, if, if the motor's continually having to work harder it's going to burn out or it's going to burn out sooner decrease in transformer lifespan so again if you've got current or heating effects caused by the harmonics the transformer is not going to last as long and again accelerated aging of insulation if the conductors are hot it's going to affect the insulation that way um, next slide please so if we look at energy efficiency so this is a traditional diagram for energy efficiency that we sort of see on a regular basis so we see the apparent power which is the total amount of power coming into the installation we have watts and we have reactive so reactive is power that's not being used for actual work so if we go back and use the same analogy of a motor a motor needs to be energized in order for it to spin but that doesn't actually do any work the watts is used to turn the motor and that's what's used in order to do the work it's required to do um, now if we move on to the next slide so we can see that now that we've talked a little bit about harmonics that reactive is actually made up of two components so we have the traditional reactive power which is related to phase so that will be to do with the phase shift between the voltage and the current from inductive capacitive loads and then we have distortion power which is related to the harmonic current so in this aspect it's important to see that if we know that the react or our reactive component is more harmonic based then we need to be considering harmonic filtering if it's more phase related or phase phase related then we'll be looking at your traditional power factor correction so we go on to the next slide so this takes us back to the original diagram so we saw at the start how we broke power quality down into its constituent parts so we said that the dno is responsible for the voltage the customer is responsible for the current and then the consumer is obviously what they're using for power so the common solutions harmonic filtering vo and power factor correction you can see how they then link together so the dno is responsible for the voltage but the customer's current can cause distortion on that voltage so harmonic filtering would hopefully help resolve that we have how the current is used so again capacitive inductive power factor correction equipment helps to improve that efficiency from the consumer side and these watts dno again is responsible for the voltage so because um, you have a standard voltage of 230 plus or minus 10 percent uh, we were part of a european union and we had a shared market so products were built to work around a a common voltage value and because in the uk we're looking at around an average of about 242 volts there's the potential there that if we turn the voltage down that we can make energy savings the only caveat in that i say is that vo is it's it's, it's not the goal it's, it's it's not a magic bullet that's going to going to solve the problem or suddenly increase your energy efficiency it's very load specific so before we for us anyway before we ever sort of recommend voltage optimization we would go around have a look at the loading on site and say well what is it you've actually got here and is it relevant and would it improve so you know for example uh, it would be suitable for your traditional incandescent lights but it wouldn't be suitable for led lighting um so we can go on to the next slide 
then energy efficiency now plays a part in the um, in the wiring regulations. So it was introduced in the 18th edition as Appendix 17. It was originally going to get its own part, Part 8, but that's now um, been allocated to the prosumer section, which uh, is now under for public consultation. Um, the appendix contains recommendations for electrical installations and we, where possible, would suggest that you know you look at it for new electrical installations and for modification of, of, inst of existing installations or what work you can do to improve the energy or ways that you could introduce that to the client. Uh, next slide, please. So within those within those suggestions or design requirements, we have things like low profiling, power factor correction, um, provision for energy, measurement of energy consumption, data logging. So for us, when we're sort of going to site doing surveys, it's always easy to get uh, measurement of the current because you can just put your CTs around the conductor. That's fairly straightforward. The issue that we have is voltage connection, um, which you're going to need. If you're going to be doing energy efficiency, you do need the voltage connection to reference against the current. Otherwise, you're just doing a, a low profile of what's actually being being used opposed to how it's being used. So what we've sort of trying to introduce now to to our clients when we go on site is that we a provision for a voltage connection. And the easiest way that we've we've found it is to try and get access to a three phase socket. Now, if there isn't one, if there's a way for them to install a temporary one or or a place where they can put at least a test point for us to at least get a reference. Um, mark it as a test point, not as a supply. And then we have a little adapter which we can plug in, which we can then safely connect four mil um, leads to and do the logging that way. So go on to the next slide. So this then comes on to what we would call power quality health check. So mentioned at the start, we developed this back in, back in the 2017, launched it in 2018. And we sort of based it around sort of the standard parameters which we would do for a survey and what we get asked to do. So voltage, current, power, um, THD, voltage and current harmonics, and then a, an indication of the voltage and current profiles, as well as some comments and recommendations all put into a standardized report. So if we go to the next slide. So this is all managed online. So if you, sign up with us on the website you can log in and then if you go on to the next slide you can see that you can upload us the data so if you've already got a logger or you've hired one download that with their software and send us that basic data file you don't have to do anything else you tell us where you were who did it you tell us the time start and end time we can get that data from the file but occasionally we find that internal clocks on loggers are not 100% accurate, so it's always nice to double check that we've got the right uh, week for the results. Tell us about the main system, three phase, four wire, three phase, three wire, frequency, 50 hertz, um, your nominal voltage, and then upload that to us. Next slide, please. So once the reports are done, that's stored on your profile and you can view it online. You can download as a PDF or you can send a shareable URL link to your customer and they can download that remotely as well if you want to. Or if you're using a hire company, they can manage that all for you as well. So they can hire you the equipment, send it out, you hook it up, do, do the survey, send it back, they'll send it to us and we'll do the report, which we'll either email you as a PDF or you'll get the link. Next slide. So as you can see, standard report. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're using a sonar or a fluke or whatever it is that you've hired. The reports will always look the same. So you've got your voltage, your current, your power, and then we use a traffic light system. Now we do this as we find it's easier to engage with the client because everybody knows what green, yellow, and red is. Um, and the clients are more likely to react or at least ask you the question, why is that red? And at that point, you can say, well, it's red because your power factor is a little bit poor. That's why we recommend power factor correction or your harmonics are yellow. You should be look, keeping an eye on those for next time or we can come back and do a, a 12 monthly check. And we can compare the results that way. 
Next slide, please. So if we touch quickly on instrumentation. So this is an example of the offering from Sonal. So they've got two form factors. So the first has a nice touchscreen control and they do three models in that. So they do a multifunction tester for your normal 18th edition wiring, but also with a built-in three-phase power logger. We've just got a new one which we've just launched, which is the multifunction tester, three-phase power logger, and it also has the provision for solar PV testing. Um, so checking the efficiency of solar installations as well as the electrical test that that's that they need. Um, you see that potentially for part eight might be quite interesting. Um, and then we move on to the other design, which is in a nice ruggedized case. So they do a nice basic PQM 700 power energy logger. So that's a very easy stop start button, on off button, connect it and it will record the parameters for you. And then we have fully featured power quality analyzers. So we can see we've got a class A and class S accuracies. So if we go on to the next slide. So what do we mean by class A and class S? So there is a standard 61,000-4-30, which defines accuracy classes and how the power quality measurements should be made by instrumentation. So 2015, that's now in its third edition. Um, back in its second edition, which was 2008, we did originally have three accuracy classes, class A, class S, and class B. Um, class B was manufacturer specific accuracies. That has now been removed in the new standard. Um, it's mentioned as an annex. Um, the main measurement class is now a class A and class S. So those instruments, whether it's a Sonor or a Fluke or a QTEC, independently verified. So we can see an example there of a certificate for the Sonor 700. Um, class S is 0.5% accurate on the voltage and class A is 0.1%. So for us, what, is, what that means is repeatability of results. So if we go back to the example that you've hired a piece of equipment and you want to um, have our little report done for you, if the first week you've hired a class A Sonal, you've done the survey, we've come back and said, right, you need power factor correction, you need harmonic filtering. The client has said, that's fantastic. Go ahead, let's do that. You install the equipment, month later you come back, you finish the work, you then want to go back and prove the fact that you actually have saved the energy. So again, using a class A, those two meters are comparable and you can go to the client and say, right, those are your measurements before and you can confidently say, right, those are your measurements now and you can demonstrate that. And the same idea with class S. So we would suggest that if you're looking at new equipment that you at least ask the question and say, oh, is it class A, is it class S? It complies with the late standard. Um, all the manufacturers typically um, have instrumentation that complies. So for example, Sonal, who we deal with, they have class A, class S, Fluke have class A, class S, uh, QTEC has a class S, um, Mitrell have class A, class S. So, you know, there's a variety out there it's one thing you don't have to worry about and you can then look at buying the equipment which is suitable for the job that you want to do as opposed to something that you're being told that no well, ours is better than that well it isn't a or s it's the same okay so next slide so just to summarize what we've gone through today so we've um a little about who we are um, we've talked about power quality and how it's separated into some definable elements, voltage, current, and power. We've seen that there's a standard that the DNO has to comply with in terms of voltage. We've looked at harmonics and how current harmonics that are caused by the customer could potentially, if they're bad enough, have an effect on that voltage. And therefore, if the DNO is failing their standard, that's why they don't, that's why potentially you could be disconnected or you would at least be in trouble or your client would be in trouble. Um, we've looked at energy efficiency and again how harmonics now do play a part in energy efficiency for the reactive side of power. Um, we've touched on some of the instrumentation and then we've also finally seen that as is a standard for the DNO and their voltage, there's also a standard for test equipment manufacturers for how they do the measurements. Um, 
So I think that sort of concludes what we were wanted to talk about today. So if there's uh, any questions or if Luke wants to come in with anything. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, that was a, uh, a fantastic presentation. Um, this is Omar here, uh, not Luke. Um, okay. I'm just looking in the uh, the Q and A, our Q and A section. Um, okay. There are no uh, questions from the audience so far, but uh, we'll just give the audience a few minutes to um, submit some questions there. In the meantime, uh, Luke, I understand you you had a, a couple of questions yourself. Yeah, no, I, firstly, I wanted to thank Rob for uh, an amazing brain dump of information there. I think there was so much uh, that, you, that you conveyed across to everyone. Uh, and I think a lot of these things are quite unfamiliar ter territory to a lot of people, uh, especially the fact that it is a two-way street with the, the DNO have a responsibility for the power and the quality of the power they deliver. Yeah. But also for the, uh, for the user as well. I think that's quite an important... Uh, Thing for people to understand. Um, yeah. I think also the, the fact that there's so many different types of flavours of distortion that are out there as well. Um, but I was, I was going to say, once the analysis has been done, um, how would a client go about correcting the, the power quality issues? Uh, you've identified that it could be caused by phase issues, so inductance, capacitance, etc., or harmonics. So I'm guessing there's uh, uh, different methods for correcting this. Yeah, so obviously, like I said, we've we broke it down into sort of into three areas. So we looked at voltage, which is the DNO's responsibility. We looked at harmonics, which is caused by the current. So the solutions at the end, which we mentioned, which were sort of harmonic filtering, power factor correction, or voltage optimization. So if you're generating a particularly high amount of harmonic current, so that's your responsibility. That's what your or your your client's doing. Um, the way to solve that would be harmonic filters. So how I like to sort of think of them is a bit like noise cancelling headphones. It might not be technically correct, but you've got a distorted waveform. So as the waveform would sort of dip, as we saw in the animation, we would inject a current and bring that back up to be in a true sinusoidal waveform. So with PFC, you've got capacitors in there. So it would sort of create like a reservoir effect. So the power that's you will be stored in the capacitors and then used by the motor to energize itself therefore you're removing the phase shift again it might be oversimplifying what it, how it actually works um, and then vo that's a little magic box that the vo manufacturers make and that just steps the voltage down so it's a good way for us as well that's a good way of regulating the voltage it's not uh, probably what it's designed to do but depending on the manufacturer and the VO box you're using, it will maintain it at 230 volts. So even if you have deviations from the, from the, from the DNO, because they're allowed 230 plus or minus 10, so that could be down to 207 or up to 253. So a VO unit won't necessarily be able to maintain a drop from, 207, from the low voltage, but traditionally you're gonna be around 242, you can maintain it. So those are, your, let's say, your three main solutions. And then, like I say, when we were looking at harmonics, and we were sort of saying reactive power traditionally with a linear load, we see the old-fashioned sort of triangle. But with non-linear loads now, we're looking at that, which I sort of say four-sided triangle, for want of a better description. And we can see that obviously you've got, you know, a phase, a phase shift relation to that, or you've got the the harmonic component of that. So if you've got a large, if your reactive power is made of of predominantly harmonic, which it probably wouldn't be. Let's say you had 80% of your reactive power is harmonic. There's no point in putting a PFC filter in there because it isn't going to cure it. If you've got, you'd fit a harmonic filter and vice versa. If you've got 80% of it's actually to do with the fact that you, all, your, all your site's got is motors and you're creating, you know, that's what's causing the problem and 20% harmonics. Well, really, let's sort out the phase issue first and then look at harmonics because harmonics are always going to be there. It's because it, because that's how equipment works these days, as we showed with the with the you know the the diagram for the the telephone charger and the PC. That's how equipment works. You know, you, it's never going to change, and it's then about managing those harmonics. So don't put everything on one phase that's got a particularly a particular type of harmonic. Share it out the same way that you would with normal loads. You know, it's sort of being it's it's thinking it through and sort of 
you know, doing it that way. Does that sort of answer the question or? Yeah, no, no, that that does. It's uh, yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, people need to understand that there are these two different aspects, and uh, yeah, focus on the main one first. Uh, but obviously, both of them do need to be sorted out to re reduce yeah. not just the energy costs, but uh, also reducing the um, yeah the the rapid degradation of equipment that uh, yeah. can be caused by this. Um, I, I think it was important. Uh, it's re really good that you showed how the uh, the non-linear uh, DC um, supply or the demand under the devices actually works because I think most people just assume a DC is just a flat line um, and that you don't have these uh, these spikes but it, as, as you've mentioned the, the increasing amount of modern equipment is adding much more harmonic distortion uh, into these into our networks and uh, everything yeah. around us that we didn't see before um, that yeah. kind of leads me on to another question um, we, I noticed that you've uh, now introduced the, um, the the tester with the solar PV uh, testing as well um, yeah. Does someone and yourself see this uh, sim simply as an opportunity uh, within the prosumer installation? So obviously having one device that can monitor more things, or do you mm. think the the addition of more prosumer devices, so uh, solar inverters, battery storage systems, um, are they going to add more of a harmonic problem onto our networks? And should people be uh, uh, testing these more just to make sure their buildings are compliant? Um. Yeah, I mean, with the with their multifunction tester, the, the 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 original model they brought out was one that was combined with a three phase power uh, logger. So they've seen that sort of as an opportunity over there um, to bring that in because obviously, like you're saying, you know, power quality is becoming more of a thing. Um, the PV came about in terms of adding it on there, if you think about it, you've, we've had, what, about 10 years of solar farms being built, solar installations being, you know, people's homes or whatever. And they, at one point they were just put up and done. Now the power that's generated from then, obviously solar is DC, which is then inverted back into AC onto the grid. Now at the minute, um, from, from sort of my experience, it was a case of, right, just do it because you want to be you know, we want to be green, we want to be generating energy and we want to be, you know, supplementing supplementing the grid and how, we, uh, and how they're generating power. And it wasn't necessarily um, watched in terms of the quality of the inverters and things that was being used. You know, it was just a case of get it done. Now, most of the inverters, good quality, don't see an issue with it. But however, that was 10 years ago. So if you think about the amount of solar installations that are out there now, that should be being checked if not just for the their um electrically but for their efficiency you know so you're generating power but is it being efficiently generated or is it just there um and then obviously if you're rectifying from dc to ac it isn't a pure waveform and there is the potential for harmonics being generated um because of the because of how that works now whether that would be you see i've always uh, I, i've always argued that really and this was never sort of implemented as far as I was ever found, but you've got 5160, which is what the, the DNO is responsible for. And I always sort of said, well, surely you should be doing something similar for solar. And that if you connected an analyzer to your solar um, generator and did a, an assessment for 5160 on that, really that should be passing that because that's going onto the grid. Um, and I think we sort of, new engineering recommendations which you know the network operators are looking at now you know they're interested in harmonics because they want to know what people are connecting and what effect that's having because again they're responsible for that supply so if you're putting on solar wind or whatever and you're creating a harmonic they're responsible for that going into somebody else's property and if they fail the if they fail the 5160 it's on them but we want green energy so you know, there, there is and, that. And I, uh, yeah, uh, and I guess um, the the inverters that they, uh, I mean, they previously had to conform to a G82 or G59, uh, yeah. and obviously these days a, a G98, G99 uh, to, to make sure that they're compatible with the grid. Um, but I guess there's, yeah, it's worth people checking that the systems are still clean and efficient because uh, things do degrade as uh, as we found out. Um, I, I think Omar's got some uh, got some other questions that have come through as well. So I'll just pass you yes. on to him. 
Thanks, Luke. Yes, we've had a few questions come in from the audience. Um, okay. So, a question from David. Uh, to challenge the DNO, uh, BSEN 5160, would the analyzer need to be class A or class S, or would either be sufficient? Right, okay. So, we use a class A. So, DNO would use a class A. So, in terms of any litigation or challenging them, you would you would need a class A. That's what I would say, um, because it's the highest accuracy. There's no arguing with it. Um, does that answer the question? I think it yep. does. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, a question now from Tim. Uh, any specific requirements to take into account when measuring power quality to a building with a CHP unit, such as uh, leisure centres? Oh. I'd have to come back to you on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, we we have your uh, details, Tim. So we'll uh, reach out to you uh, yep. after the webinar with a, with a, an answer for you. Um, a question now from Alistair. Uh, we have a site that we believe to have harmonic issues uh, mm -hmm. affecting a three pH RCD, a three phase sorry RCD, and it's possible a water treatment plant is fed from the same supply. Could we use harmonic monitoring? to prove inverter control mo motors are affecting the customer's supply. Right, so you'd be looking to prove it's them, as their harmonics as opposed to um, what you're doing. So yeah, um, so what we would do on that situation, I would probably go in and we would do a, a combined uh, 5160 survey as well as a harmonic survey. So we would prove that the supply that's coming, or the voltage supply that's coming from your client is either okay or bad. Um, the current, like we say, is what you're producing. So we could prove that your current is okay. If it's something that's coming from them and it's severe enough, then we could potentially see something on the voltage that would indicate that um, it's them externally. So if the distortion on the, the voltage didn't relate to harmonics that you're producing, then possibly we could do it that way, I think. Great, thank you. Bit. Thanks. Um, and I believe we have one more uh, from the audience. Um, question from Andy. Do harmonics need to be taken into account when cable sizing? Yes, yeah, so like we said, with harmonics, um, say the zero sequence, if you're sizing the cable, I say current isn't supposed to be going down the con uh, as a neutral conductor, but these days, because of how it is, so you'd need a larger conductor. So it's something to take into consideration. However, you'd also then have to say, well, what are you connecting? So any, any equipment that you're connecting in theory is passed an EMC test, so it complies with these harmonic emissions itself. So I think it's 61,000-4-7, I think is one of them. So all white goods, brown goods, or whatever will have this compliance, but they won't produce a harmonic above certain certain limits but yeah if you've it's something to, it's something to consider um you could do a before survey look at the harmonics that you've got and if you knew what you were going to be adding on to the installation so well, i'm expecting that that's going to produce x amount of current therefore the size of the conductors i've got now is it potentially going to cause a problem so you could look at it that way i suppose Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Um, so that concludes the uh, audience questions that we've had. Okay. Um, Luke, I don't know if, if you had anything to add, if you wanted to jump back in. Uh, just one last one, kind of like Colombo here. Um, I know, uh, as we talked about extensively earlier on, uh, the clients have a responsibility for the, the any noise they're putting back on the on the network. Do the DNOs actively challenge and find people or disconnect them? Uh, have you seen that occur? Um, I've had I've heard of people being challenged, actively okay. disconnect, actively disconnected. No, um, and I think possibly one of the reasons for that, if you imagine, if you're producing that much current harmonic, mm -hmm. but you're causing a problem. You're going to be a very big installation. So they're not it's necessarily going to come along and say, yeah. let's say, let's say it's a football ground, for example, and they're producing a high level of harmonic. They're not going to come across and say, right, we're going to disconnect Manchester United because they're causing harmonics. That would mm. just, you know, it isn't going to happen. So they would, they're more likely to say, look, we've an issue on our network. 
we've gone round and we've checked because it's their wiring they can check it so they can hook up their own loggers like we said before they'll use a class a so there's no arguing in terms of the accuracy of the results that they're getting and they're saying right we've we've monitored the installation down the road he's he's fine his his current harmonics there within what we would expect next door to you is fine and the other side is fine but when we monitor what you're actually consuming you're the one that's producing these harmonics and we suspect that you're the problem so we would kindly request that you sort it out um mm -hmm. that's that's probably the where it's but that, that's probably how they would approach mm -hmm. it but obviously yeah, you didn't so then, then they would then they would probably cut you off like with anything yeah you know that's fair enough but uh okay. now that i think that's everything from me um I, I think fantastic presentation thank you very much yes thank you rob um just looking at the time i think we've got time for one more uh we've had mm -hmm. one more question from the audience uh okay. from tim are there any extra considerations when conducting tests to split phase uh 460 volt supplies I mean, when we're sort of looking at harmonics and voltage, you know, you're looking, you're looking at the conductors and you're looking at the harmonics on those conductors. So you would still look, I'm just trying to think from a practical point of view, if you're saying split, he's saying split phase, but off the same phase, is that what he means? So you're sh essentially sharing a phase between two different people? or not uh i'm not sure if if that's what if that's what it means but um yeah the the, the way the question is phrased uh it says uh, when conducting tests to split phase 460 volt supplies i'd have to check on that but i say normally yeah. we, would, we, would, we would be looking at the input to the logger is through ct so three channels so you would look at the the measurements that that's making and relate that back to harmonic limits in terms of current or the, the 5160 limits for the voltage harmonics and you would assess it that way so whether it was 460 or 415 or whatever if you're looking at to something we, we talked about the loop about relative harmonics you're 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 relating that harmonic distortion to the fundamental so whether that would be 240 volts or 230 it's a percentage so i don't know if that's what the what the question is in relation to or if that sort of answers the question but if he wants to give us a call or whatever we can we can certainly talk to him afterwards about that yes and uh, also um you've reminded me rob uh, just a reminder to our viewers there are uh, rob rob has kindly uh, put his contact details at the bottom of his slides so you can see them there on your screen now and uh, these contact details and any sort of um other resources that we might want to link to will be uh, under the replay in the description for the youtube video replay of this session yeah. Um, so I think we've got time for one more. Um, mm -hmm. Has the DNO voltage tolerance changed to plus or minus 10%? Um, I thought it was plus 10% minus 6%. Right. Uh, so the plus minus the plus the the, it's the the plus or minus 10% is the 5160 standard. It's not the DNO. So the standard which covers is a tolerance for the UK, for France, for everybody else. So the generation tolerance is what the is what you're referring to there with the six and the ten. Mm -hmm. Great, that's thank still, you. As far as I know, that's still the same. But I say as a standard, yeah, they need the nominal voltage of two thirty plus or minus, and we um, our plus six or our, our six and ten falls within that. Yeah. Okay. Great, thank you, Rob, and. Um, with that, we will conclude today's session. So uh, big, big thanks to uh, Rob and Luke for presenting today. Uh, fantastic presentation, very uh, detailed and informative. Um, we're already getting great feedback from the audience. And uh, thank you to our viewers for joining us this afternoon. Um, as I said earlier, a full replay of today's session will be up on our YouTube channel. That's uh, youtube.com forward slash ECA live. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, stay tuned also to um, the eca.co.uk webpage for updates on future uh, webinars that we'll be doing in, in the ECA Learning Zone series. So thank you, everyone, and have a great evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you.